Welcome back to Dylan with Sid Meier's Colonization, where we continue the colonization of the Americas as the French citizens to these colonies. As long as we built up enough Liberty Bells in reserve, they will continue to remain at 100% as well. Hey, we found some minerals underneath the forest right there. That's fantastic. That means that without a road, we're already at 14 ore production with the 100% Sons of Liberty. Once we add a road, we should be at 16 ore production. We built a proper fort in Proxima as well. After that, I think that we would like to go for a shipyard. With a shipyard, we can start producing privateers, and there's a good chance that we'll have Francis Drake in not too long. Alternatively, we could, of course, continue working on artilleries, which is never a bad thing. Yeah, let's work on the artilleries. This free colonist is the first free colonist we have access to, and we're going to give him some horses, make him a scout, and then we'll put him onto, I think, the next caravel to head on north up to Jamestown. We'll put him in the open area so that he doesn't get ambush bonused by the surrounding natives. It's incredible to me that the English haven't taken out these native villages. We pulled it off in what? A couple turns? Three, four, five turns maybe? They haven't burned down a single one. So the king is raising our taxes by 5%. In order to stop that, we would have to hold a Proxima Coats party, which would destroy a lot of coats. And we do sell a lot of coats. So I think we're just going to accept this for now. We got a stable built in Ironhold. Very nice. After that, we should probably go for another artillery. Artillery are extremely good at defending colonies. We can use them as defenses for the smaller colonies that we build as we spread outwards. The arrival of two more free colonists is going to encourage me to train them into elder statesmen, I believe. Yes, let's go with that. We're going to train them into elder statesmen. We can support them in terms of food, and we can support them in terms of revolutionary support. Even with the addition of those two colonists, we are still at 100% revolutionary support in Proxima, which means that we don't lose the plus two bonus. Once more, our privateer is free to set sail. Oh, he grabbed the scout. That is interesting. Because of that, we're going to be careful in our movements and avoid engaging anybody. I didn't mean to put the scout onto a privateer, but the privateer does move twice as fast as the caravel. So if we get the scout there twice as fast, so that we can start destroying the English left and right. A special thing about artillery is that when artillery attack, and I'll find out whether or not they can be damaged attacking out of a colony, since I read online that they can't be, I'll make sure they just become damaged and they can be repaired. We're chopping down the forest on this river to turn into a prairie for food and or cotton production. And this pioneer I'm sending over to the square right here to road. And then I'll consider chopping that forest, but I think I'll leave it for lumber production eventually. Right now we have a farmer working it. Alternatively, I could chop the forest into a field and then turn it into purely food production to sustain Ironhold, so that Ironhold can get even taller. We are planning to eventually establish musket production here, once we have some more gunsmiths, and we spread out more. Uh, there are the Iroquois attacking from the north. We have that fort though, and we have a veteran Chagoon. Actually, we have an artillery here, so 150% strength with artillery versus raid, another 100%. Even though these are mounted warriors, which means that they have guns and horses with strength 3 and a 50% attack bonus, we should absolutely crush them. Because these are multiplicative, it's 5 times, I think, 150. So that's 7.5, and then 7.5 doubled becomes 15 versus, like, 4.5. And we, we completely obliterated them. That is why artillery are so good at defending colonies, especially from Indian raids. Alright, with the privateer, we can actually insert the scout. Thankfully, this was not a fortress right here in Plymouth. So we're not going to get it. Ooh, uh, Galleon. We can slip past him. If he were a frigate, we'd have to make a roll to slip past, I believe. We should be able to insert the scout right next to Jamestown. So on the next turn, we can start destroying the forces hanging out around us. Look how many Jacoons are just standing around everywhere. The AI get a pretty large bonus towards just like free horses and free tools is what people would suspect. I would not be surprised if that's true. We're also going to need another scout sent down south towards the Dutch so that we can take them on, which is going to be one of these two. We've got a warehouse expansion built in Gunny, so now we can store up to 300 goods at a time. Next up, 
we would like to probably get some more artillery. Alternatively, a college would be a good idea too, so that we can train people here as well if we want to. Specifically, things like master blacksmiths and gunsmiths. A stable wouldn't be a bad idea either. Let's build a stable first. That's going to be pretty quick to build. Hey, hey, 100% of the population in all of our colonies supports independence. That's fantastic. So we're going to essentially the scout and put him on the caravel. And the caravel will sail down to the closest French colony, which if I remember right is in this area actually. With our scout now in position and ready to speak to the English if we need to, I do believe that it's time to say, screw you, get off my land. Well, peace treaty, break it. So artillery and open does reduce us. Gotcha, gotcha. We show pretty decent odds against these dudes. Got them. Next, so we had dragoons versus soldiers. Pretty good odds. Routed them very nice indeed. But they have even more soldiers standing there. Next, our French dragoons lost that time. Unfortunate, but we have plenty of forces. Mm, these are veterans as well. We have decent odds, but no guarantee. We lost. Oh well. That's just the issue of fighting these dudes. There's so freaking many of them. I've got the horses to sustain a pretty large amount of combat, but maybe I should just rely on artilleries. So French artillery damaged. We're gonna find out if we need to spend tools to repair it. I don't believe we do, but we shall continue the fight. I'll be right back once I've done as much damage as I can possibly do. Hey, hey, we captured some English columns. Very nice. I did not anticipate that we would actually start capturing people. All right, we've lost two battles as well as a artillery that got damaged. So we had two dragoons get demoted to soldiers, but that's all right. We got plenty more horses where that came from. In fact, I might be able to equip them once more immediately. Indeed, I can. With that done, all we got to do is take our scout, waltz on into Jamestown, meet with the mayor, talk to the English, say that we don't contone piracy. We got no interest in that. Of course we do, actually. And then we just agree to a peace treaty. There we go. We go in peace. I'd ask them to withdraw their forces, but they're not going to, so I'm going to make them withdraw. We need more carpenters, so I'm going to pull a carpenter from the lumber mill in Proxima and assign a free colonist to the lumber mill instead. And what the hell are you exactly? You're an expert scout, right? Yeah, seasoned scout. Not anymore, you're not. We captured that from the English. And that seasoned scout that is now a free colonist is probably going to go over to Ironhold and get training as a carpenter as well. I need more carpenters. I would like to have at least two carpenters in each city, if not potentially three, as well as carpenters for the other cities that we lay down, well, colonies. I wouldn't really refer to them as cities so much as maybe towns. This privateer is nearby a galleon. I'm very tempted to take the shot. At the same time though, what I could do is I could let the Galleon move and see if it picks up some cargo instead. We'll let the Galleon live, although it has a pretty damn good chance apparently of beating us in combat. I doubt that this caravel will get attacked by a privateer, so I'm not going to escort it. That might be a mistake. <laughs> Once I get shipyards up and running, I might make a couple frigates. Hey hey, we got Peter's Story Savant. So now we can build customs houses and trade directly to France. And a new cargo of coats is ready a safe harbor. Very nice indeed. Now I do need to check to see, I think, Customs House's circumvent tax rate. So I confirmed it online. It doesn't say it on here, but you do circumvent taxes. So joke's on you, King. No taxes that we're going to pay ever again, except on maybe treasures. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Proxima. And because this is our primary shipping hub, we're going to build a custom house. And we'll sell all goods that are extra from Proxima, any extra coats, cigars, etc. Of course, not our muskets or horses, straight to Europe. So we no longer need to send ships directly to Europe, except to go pick people up. And we have so much tool production now that I can actually afford to equip the next pioneer to start working in the fields, getting everything set up. Conifer forests are quite good for lumber. So I'm actually going to leave this forest alone, and I'm going to turn it into lumber production pretty soon. Which means that this farmer, I'm going to send him off somewhere else. Probably to work that tile right there, just south of Proxima. So I will do that. We'll road that tile, and then we'll chop down the Broadleaf Forest just south of Proxima. And once again, we're ready for some more killing. Let's do it. Oh, a peace treaty, sure. Shoot him. Ah, uh, French artillery damage, no big deal. 
we didn't actually lose anything, truly. This Dragoon is on a mountain, which means that he's very well defended. I'm just gonna throw the artillery at him, because why not? Even if he dies, it doesn't matter. We can just repair it. Yep, nothing lost. I don't want to throw my actual soldiers at it, because that's a waste of horses. And we've got a bunch of extra free colonists to send from Proxima over to Ironhold to begin education. In this case, I'm going to educate up some carpenters. Actually, educating more statesmen is always important. We need those a lot sooner than carpenters. Well, statesmen are just incredibly valuable. So I'll switch those two out. And there we go. It's very nice to see our land slowly clearing of English scum. The Dutch will be next. Let's take a look and see just how many freaking dragoons they have standing around my scout. These two actually got off the boat from the galleon, so taking the galleon down would have taken down those troops. I probably should have taken that attack, but I had no idea that they were on board. I think after this, if we can take Adam Smith, we'll be taking Adam Smith. And then probably Francis Drake to make this privateer more effective and to make all future privateers more effective. The arrival of this free colonist prompts me to train up a carpenter since I only have a schoolhouse in Gunny. We'll have to keep the frigate nearby Proxima to ensure that no enemy vessels come by, particularly privateers, and blockade Proxima so that our customs house won't be able to work once it's built. We have plenty of soldiers on hand in Safe Harbor, so we're going to start taking shots at these non-veteran Dragoons standing around our lands. See if we can take them down. Got them. Next up. Get rid of them. <laughs> Some more free colonists for us to take. Hello, welcome to our colonies. You're lucky to hear more. Oh, that one was actually a criminal. Interesting. I'll take him anyway. Come here. Nice. So after those combats, we took down another English Dragoon here and on the deer. We cannot yet attack this Dragoon on the mountain. That would be silly. I'm just going to throw artillery at it until it dies or moves. If it moves, then I'll start hitting it with regular Dragoons. And we got this Dragoon to get demoted to a soldier. It makes sense to not demote a soldier into a colonist, because a colonist is more likely to simply run. It's probably better to leave him as a soldier to attack him twice in the next turn in order to capture the colonist. But now that we're done beating up the English, this guy is surrounded by the enemy, he's just going to go have a chat with the mayor. So let's move him. There are no privateers here. What are you talking about? And we'll accept the treaty. Go in peace, English brothers. See you next turn. They shouldn't be around my colonies. I wouldn't be doing this if they hadn't respected my borders. <laughs> They're moving like five more dragoons south towards our colonies. There's just more people to feed us. I'm totally fine with that. We are going to need to start breeding some more horses in order to continue the fight though, I believe. We'll probably just fall back to just using artilleries for the most part. I'm not going to attack with non-veteran troops. Unless I feel that I can definitely win the fight. Because veterans are... Because non-veterans are significantly weaker than veterans. Let's grab some free colonists. And an ore miner to become another colonist. So we got Jean DeWitt. What do you do, Jean DeWitt? Allow trade to foreign colonies. I have no interest in that. Ferdinand Magellan makes our ships faster. Francis Drake makes our privateers stronger. And Brebeuf makes all of our missionaries experts. Let's make... Magellan also halves the travel time to Europe, I think. But let's go with Drake. We're going to get all the founding fathers here pretty quick anyway. There should be a Dutch. There it is. Get off my boat. So now that we have the Dutch right there as well, we can take them on too. Oh my god. Are you serious right now, Barbados? <sighs> Thanks for the colony. You're mine, friend. Uh, do I want to keep this colony? Interesting question. At the moment, no. Maybe later, but not right now. That is an interesting choice of placement because it can access these tiles for fishing. I'll keep that in mind later. Ah, uh, you can't repair artillery apparently. Mm. In that case, throwing artillery at the enemy is not worthwhile. I was kind of wondering why they weren't getting repaired. In that case, having attacked in artillery was actually a waste. Oh, all these damaged artillery, we're going to throw them at the... Well, even damaged artillery are pretty good at defending from natives, I bet. Yeah, they still have a strength 3, plus 100% defense. So we're going to keep the damaged artillery for defending colonies that we set up further north. We're not going to try to waste them. I didn't realize that you couldn't repair them. I kind of assumed that you could repair them, but the internet says no. Welcome to our forces, English colonist. You had some guns, but now you're ours. 
It's very interesting that we can simply force them to work for us, not as criminals, but as actual colonists. All these other Dragoons are gonna head up to Gunny and eliminate the surrounding forces. Oh. Oh. So England's probably complaining about our privateers again. I have no privateers here. Keep, leave me alone. They want a peace treaty? No. We'll talk to you in a second. Hello, Dutch. We don't have a peace treaty. Come on. You can win. You can win. Do it. Yes. Gotcha. There's some armed braves that were sneaking down towards my other colonies. We're going to attack them as soon as possible. Throw the army at them. We have the advantage. We have the attack bonus. They are much weaker than us. We actually lost that fight. Interesting. That's fine. There's plenty more where that came from. Take them down. Got them. Let's see if we can take down these Dutch soldiers right outside of Gunny. We can indeed. Very nice. Very nice. What are you? I'm not sure. We'll find out. Oh, those are actual veterans. Right, right. Well then. Welcome to our colony, veteran soldier. You make some great soldiers for us. I love how clean my lands look now. It's wonderful. We'll of course make the peace treaty with England again. Mm, I attacked the Dutch a little bit early because I can't activate my scout. Forgot about that. It's no big deal though. There's no way that they can actually successfully attack us. They do have a frigate somewhere around here. So I'll just be careful about moving my ships for one turn. We need more lumberjacks. So we're going to put a lumberjack in the college. Put a free colonist lumberjacking. And then we could also probably use some more farmers and or fishermen. We're going to be expanding quite rapidly soon. Yeah, let's pull the farmer. We'll put in the colonist to farm. Still at 100%, so nothing to worry about. We've also got this criminal. I think I can give the criminal guns. Because they gave the criminal guns. I'm surprised about that. You can't do that in the remake. Criminals cannot take guns in the remake of colonization. Let's see if we can make you a Jakun. We can, that's so weird. That makes no sense. I would never give a criminal a gun. I'm not Russia. <coughs> Wagner. Privateer is going to go hunting a little further south. We'll see if we can't catch any English vessels sailing between their colonies in the south and the north. We've got an extra free colonist that we captured in Gunny. We're going to send him towards Ironhold to be educated. We're finally making extensive use of our education system again. Almost all of our facilities are full of teachers. Going to Stable and Gunny, which is very nice. That'll greatly increase our horse production here. We're going to focus on horse breeding in the primary four cities because they have enough food production to sustain it. In fact, we're probably going to end up switching towards primarily food production in the four primary cities and then moving input goods production out to external areas. That'll probably take quite a while though. Let's start working on that college here in Gunny. We need to upgrade our education system. And we've got the customs house in Proxima built. Very nice. So we need to turn off selling sugar, tobacco, cotton, and furs. We will not sell more. We will sell cotton, cloth, we'll sell coats, cloth, cigars, rum, and silver if we ever have any. And with that, I no longer need to ship goods directly to Europe. I just need to sail there to pick people up that want to come over. Let's begin work on a shipyard now. We could work on building more artilleries, but I think mm -hmm, that's a hard choice. With a shipyard, we could build frigates. We could also build caravels and merchantmen and or galleons if we really want to. Increasing our naval fleet would allow us to expand across the seas and establish colonies in other locations if we wanted to and then give us access to say sugar since rum is very very pricey right now. I like that idea. We should have at least one shipyard. We'll begin work on probably production of one frigate at least. So we'll have one frigate to guard Proxima and a frigate to go between the sugar colonies and our regular colonies. This Dragoon is heavily dug in now on the mountainside, so he has a plus 50% bonus from being in defensive terrain, plus 150% bonus from the mountain, so I'm just going to let them stand there. It's not worth taking the fight to them, and I already have the tiles eroded, so there's no more improvement that I can do. I'll just road around them, and if they ever move, then I'll kill them. Well, capture them, and let them see the light of the French way. We of course need to have a chat with the Dutch and convince them that we have no issues with them whatsoever. Hmm, privateer. Privateer against privateer. Let's see who wins. Probably gonna be us. Got him. We need more carpenters, so a carpenter's gonna step out of the lumber mill and allow the free colonists to step into the lumber mill and iron hold. 
That'll slightly delay the artillery, but we don't need that many actual artilleries and buildings at this point in time. Once we have Adam Smith, we'll prioritize building a little bit more, but we're going to need more carpenters for a safe harbor and to distribute around the primary colonies, as well as to begin production of our satellite colonies. We got our first carpenter trained up properly, so we're going to send off this carpenter to safe harbor to begin working on whatever we're building there at the moment. We got more regulars added to the army. It doesn't matter to us. We're probably going to build an absolutely enormous army and just crush the king. And we have a lot of very, very juicy caravels down here with some cargo on them. Say hello to my little friend. Ah, oh, they evaded us. Come on now. You know, I could attack the galleon with this six cargo holds full with my frigate. I can always just make peace with the English immediately afterwards. I like that idea. We don't have a peace treaty. What are you talking about? 16 plus 50% versus a 10 minus 75. There's almost no way we lose this fight. Ooh, muskets. I like muskets. I'll take your muskets. And I'll take your other muskets too. As well as your horses. Fantastic. Oh my goodness. How much can I hold on this thing? I'll take your furs as well. Haha, <laughs> we sunk it. Shouldn't have stood around my colonies. Wouldn't be doing this. You respect me, I respect you. Simple the way the world works. Of course, the English are sending even more dragoons down south to harass us. I view them as free colonists. Because that's what they are. Good job, soldiers. One more to take. Let's get them. Got them. We got another free colonist to throw into the education system. Imagine that. Imagine if you went to war with somebody. They attacked you. They captured you. And then forced you to go to school. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like a re-education camp. But hey, they end up better off. So whatever. These dragoons aren't fortified anymore. But of course, like I said, they're not a threat. So I'm just going to leave them alone. Thinking about the situation of when the REF tries to land, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave one forest around most of our colonies and then chop down all the other forests. And then what I'll do is I'll position units on the tiles that are open terrain so that the enemy is forced to land on the forested terrain. And then I can attack them on the forested terrain. I think that's reasonable. So on Proxima, we're going to leave this conifer forest, which is along the coast. And we'll just go ahead and chop down this broadleaf forest to turn it into a food producing tile. Or potentially like a, I think a cotton producing tile in this case. We do need some more carpenters, so I'm going to establish another trainee in Proxima to become a carpenter. This one was captured from the English as well. Specifically captured from Barbados, the colony right there. Hey look, more English to capture. Very nice. The carpenter and gunny is now trained up, so we'll put the regular carpenter back into the lumber mill. And then I think we're going to consider starting to expand north using the ore miners that I have available. The pioneer is finally going to get some proper pioneering tools. The ore miner is going to get out of my colony and go north somewhere. We need to start thinking about purging the Iroquois, but the English keep sending so many freaking troops at us. I think at some point in time that ore miner got moved by accident, so I just put him back there. My mistake. I don't know how that happened. I think for now we're going to sit tight and just keep destroying the people that come at us and build up a larger army. We built another artillery and iron hold. I'm going to continue building artilleries and iron hold. I don't see any reason to build anything else at the moment. I'll tell you what I really need is not a fort and safe harbor, but in fact a university. So we're going to start working on a university. All of my education buildings are full. I believe, except for the one in Gunny. But I don't have any free colonists available in Gunny to teach, other than the soldier right here, but he's going to remain a soldier. And in fact, you have an opportunity to prove yourself, Dragoon. Prove yourself against that English Dragoon right there. Take him down. We got a 50 50 shot of pulling this off. Better to attack natives, because it's a lot easier to bring down their villages. But we have plenty of horses on hand, and I can buy more if I need to. You pulled it off. You're no longer a petty criminal. You're now an indentured servant. <laughs> you got a little ways to go, buddy. Next. Kill him. Ah, uh, we got routed. Too bad. Plenty more horses where that came from. Take him down. Now we do have a free colonist, which came from that soldier that we just captured. This particular colonist, I think we're going to teach to be a farmer. So let's pull the farmer. Let's put in the free colonist. There's plenty more fools where that came from, so we're going to focus on taking down this Dragoon. Uh, that one's an indentured servant, actually. It'll take some time to get to veteranhood. Alternatively, we could just educate him. 
I think educating makes sense in the case of indentured servants, criminals, etc. because it takes one combat to go from non-veteran to veteran, and we want to reduce the number of combats that we have to go through in order to maximize the number of veterans. So in lieu of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over to Gunny, stand down the indentured servant, Dragoon, and instead equip the free colonist, who was just an enemy soldier, with some guns and some horses, and will instead train this indentured servant to be a farmer. With that in mind, we're also going to pull this free colonist out as a regular colonist, put the indentured servant in as a farmer, then train him up to be a regular farmer. Well, actually a lumberjack. I take that back. He was a lumberjack. The free colonists that we got from somewhere, I'm not sure where, at this point we're getting them from just everywhere. I'm going to give him some guns and some horses. Probably going to need to go ahead and just buy some more horses from the mainland. We have plenty of gold on hand, so it's not a big deal. At this point, I actually really need more colonies with more education systems to educate all of my people. We've got plenty of muskets to go around, and we're going to push some more dragoons into service, just like that. They'll head north, and we'll start taking down some native villages in not too long. But after that, I think I need to back off of the horse usage, other than attacking anybody that comes into my lands, because I am straining our population of horses. Our caravels are now going to be used primarily for shipping population back and forth to Europe. We've got 2,000 gold on hand. I could buy a merchantman, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and recruit more people instead. Let's try to sink this English caravel one more time. Oh, there's a galleon hidden behind it. Interesting. We might lose this fight. Nope. We got him. We sunk that caravel. And we damaged the English galleon. Very nice. Very nice indeed. We're going to bring back that loot of muskets, horses, and furs to Proxima. Let's drop it off. You know, I was saying that we weren't going to equip any more Dragoons, but now that I got those muskets and those horses from the frigate booty, we're going to equip one more. After that, we will back off, let the horses restock, other than attacking the enemies that come towards us. If we have to, we'll go ahead and just buy some more horses if necessary. Fantastic, we've got two more statesmen trained up in Proxima, which means I need to think about what I want to do with these statesmen. With the training of a farmer in Safe Harbor, we pull the farmer out of the college, and I think we're going to finally reestablish Farmville up here. We will, of course, burn this village to the ground, and then probably go west and burn this village to the ground, and then just kind of go on a killing spree, based on the number of dragoons that we have available to turn into veterans. We're not going to risk artillery against them. We want to save artillery for the king's forces. I could do some micromanagey stuff where I stand down dragoons into regular soldiers whenever I don't need them. That is something that I could do, but that is a lot of excess work, but it would be reasonable. Hey look, some more free colonists. I was going to send that farmer out, but so now that I've got another free colonist available in Safe Harbor, I almost feel like I might as well train up some more farmers. We've got a college. We could train up fur traders, but I don't have a huge fur income at the moment, and I'd rather get more food to support more horse growth. So we're going to move a farmer so that we can train a free colonist to become a farmer. Hey, we found some prime cotton underneath this tile right there. Very nice indeed. We can no longer get furs from it. That's okay. We'll just send this colonist somewhere else. Probably Lumberton, which we are going to reestablish in not too long. There's another wonderful looking caravel right there. We do have one unit of cargo, but I'm not too worried about it. This is just a caravel. We should be able to, to smack the crap out of it very easily. I'll take the furs, why not? And we sunk it too, very nice indeed. Let's take a look at the foreign report to see how we're doing in comparison to the other colonies. So right now the English have a total of 55 colonists actually in their colonies. We have 83, and the Dutch have 74. It's time to go burn down some native villages, so I'm going to move the non-veteran Jacoons north and send a veteran dragoon or two to guard them. Most of the veterans I will of course leave behind simply because I need them to kill the annoying bastards that want to come down and stand around my colonies. One of these elder statesmen that was teaching in Proxima, they're going to get sent over to Gunny to increase the Liberty Bell production there, just in case I need to add people to Gunny, which I will probably need to do eventually. The other elder statesmen will remain in Proxima, at least for the moment. I'll assign a weaver to the weaver shop, 
Actually, I'll assign him to the carpentry shop. We don't have enough cotton on hand to make it worthwhile to have him work for a turn at the shop. Thanks so much for watching Dealing With It. I'd really like to hear any feedback you have about the video in the comments below. I think all feedback is good feedback. If you liked the video, leaving a like would really help the video to reach other people that might also enjoy the video. If you'd like to see more, you can always subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one in episode 12.